আসসালামু আলাইকুম আমি ডক্টর আসিফ নওয়াজ স্যার লেকচার অফ অ্যানাটমি অ্যান্ড জুনিয়র সার্জিক্যাল রেসিডেন্ট টুডে আই এম গোয়িং টু মেক অ্যা নিউ অ্যানাটমিক্যাল ভিডিও অ্যাবাউট দি স্মল ইন্টেস্টাইন সো টুডে আই এম গোয়িং টু এক্সপ্লেন দি পার্টস অফ দি স্মল ইন্টেস্টাইন লেন্থ অ্যান্ড দি হিস্টোলজিক্যাল স্ট্রাকচারস অ্যান্ড দি সারাউন্ডিং রিলেশনশিপ so here you can see a portion of small intestine so from the beginning to end after the stomach the next part of gut is called the duodenum here you can see the carp c shaped lu luminous structures okay this is a luminous structures so this is the duodenum and the the next part is called the jejunum then the ileum so the small intestine consists of duodenum jejunum and ileum so after the stomach the part of intestine is duodenum jejunum and ileum so here the part is called the duodenum so duodenum has also four parts that is first part of the duodenum second part of the duodenum third part of the duodenum and the fourth part of the duodenum so first part is at least 5 cm second part is 8 to 10 cm and the third part is 10 cm and fourth part is 2.5 cm so length is very important now the surrounding relationship here you can see the surrounding many structures some vessels some muscles and band so here this is the first part of the duodenum so what are these structures related to the first part of the duodenum so in the superior the, it is the superior border of the first part of the duodenum which is called the free border of the lesser omentum it re relies on the free border of the lesser omentum posterior posteriorly there are three structures you can see just from before backward it is called the common bile duct then the portal vein and to the right posterior to the right is called the inferior vena cava so inferior vena cava lies posteriorly first bile duct then portal vein then the slightly right posteriorly to the inferior vena cava so this is the posterior relations and what is the anterior relations that is the quadrate lobe of the nucleus quadrate sorry the quadrate lobe of liver and the neck of the gallbladder so in the first part from anteriorly it is related with the quadrate lobe of the liver neck of the gallbladder posteriorly bile duct portal vein and the inferior vena cava and superiorly just the free border of the lesser omentum and inferiorly here you can see the curved part here there is a, a, a another viscera is called the head of the pancreas we will discuss it later on okay so now the second part so this is the second part of the duodenum second part is totally retroperitoneal so first part is partly peritoneal second part is retroperitoneal third part is also retroperitoneal fourth part is also retroperitoneal so most of the part of the duodenum is retroperitoneal so now the posterior part of the second part relationship in the medially the head of the pancreas laterally uh, there is a space that is called the morison's pouch you will see the morison's pouch the continuation of morison's pouch 
and posteriorly there is two tru structures one is a kidney and the above the kidney is called suprarenal gland this is the suprarenal gland this is the kidney and retroduodenal pod that is posterior part of the second part of the duodenum consists of the renal vessels as well as pelvis that is you can see the pelvis which comes from the kidney and also uh, renal vessels that is right renal vessels also presents posterior to the second part of the duodenum and this is the third part of the duodenum about 10 cm it has anterior some structures and also some posterior structures so anteriorly the portal vein lies anterior to the third part of the duodenum duodenum and also you can see the superior mesenteric artery it is a superior mesenteric artery portal vein lies anterior to the third part of the duodenum and posteriorly you can see uh, great vessels that is inferior vena cava and the abdominal aorta and partly the sympathetic chain that is the great right and left sympathetic chain also present posterior to the third part of the duodenum and now you can see there is a curved part which is a junction between third part and fourth part of the duodenum fourth part is so small area containing so this fourth part is curved due to a ligament it is called the ligament of traits or suspensory ligament of duodenum that will be discussed later on so the posteriorly another structure is present that is you can see a bundle of muscles it is called the psoas major which is started from the lumbar vertebrae and the end in the lesser trochanter of the femur okay now here you can see some ligamental attachment this is the cross of the diaphragm so here uh, i also told you that third and fourth part is curved due to a ligamental attachment that was a suspensory ligament of duodenum okay which is started from the uh, in between just this top of the third in between the third and fourth part of the vertebra so here you can see the ligament so it is suspensory ligament of duodenum but made up of smooth muscles so it is a ligament structures but there is a smooth muscle present on it so which is uh, all attached with the right cross of the diaphragm so this is the right cross of the diaphragm and which is originated from the in between third and fourth part of the diaphragm so here you can see our dot 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 structures and part of the greenish structures so it is very important for surgical anatomy so here you can see the there are some folds that is superior duodenal folds that is paradurenal folds inferior duodenal folds and there are some recess that is superior duodenal recess paradurenal recess and the inferior duodenal recess and th and this is the retro duodenal recess so three fold four recess so what is recess recess means the gap so there you can see it is a gap okay this is a gap so uh, this gap is very important for surgical access or also helps in passing food or these recess will act as a gateway where the duodenal content or the enzymatic content along with the food particle goes into the goes into the small intestine okay so the paradurenal space 
so here we can see the paradigmal space so here the paradigmal space has related with the inferior mesenteric vein so sometimes the surgeons has to find out the inferior mesenteric vein to for any colorectal surgeries or others procedures for rectum and anal canal the rectum so and the colon so to find out the inferior mesenteric vein so a surgeon must to find out the paradigmal fold and the recess so you can see the inferior mesenteric vein just lie posterior to the paradigmal fold okay so for resection anastomosis or any gut operations surgeons are usually access through the space or the recess okay so here you can see the paradigmal recess so this is the paradigmal folds this is the superior duodenal folds this is the inferior duodenal folds so here you can see there is a gap this is called the duodenal recess so this is the paradigmal fossa or the recess so this recess is usually been used so here you can see the blue structures this is the inferior mesenteric vein which lies on the just posterior to the paradigmal fossa here you can see the peritoneal relation so here the first part of the duodenum which is uh, the anterior surface of the first part of the duodenum is peritoneal here you can see the peritoneal reflection peritoneum or the covering of the abdomen is reflected in the visceras so the anterior wall of the duodenum is reflected that is here you can see the uh, portal triad and the anterior surface of the duodenum some sometimes the reflection is cut down or breached that means so what are the structures present in the breech membranes so in this breech fold you can see the transverse mesocolon so here uh, there is a mesenteric structures or the another mesenteric structure that is transverse mesocolon lies in these two layers and here you can see another two folds another two breach of the anterior surface is called the root of the mesentery so here i i said that there is a band like structures this green band like structures as two layers is called the root of the mesentery it goes through okay now uh, so the most of the duodenum is retroperitoneal that means the anterior surface is peritoneal but the posterior surface is totally non peritoneal okay now we are going to discuss the interior of the duodenum the first part of the small intestine so here you can see the pyloric orifice the pyloric orifice of the stomach so the curved c shaped structures is called the duodenum so this is the first part of the duodenum the second part of the duodenum the third part of the duodenum and the fourth part of the duodenum so you can see the we can see the mucous membrane the or the surface of epithelium and along the some mucus fold so circular mucus fold okay so here in the second part of the duodenum so first part of the duodenum is devoid of circular fold so all of these area contains some circular mucus fold except the first part it is called the duodenal cap so it is called the duodenal cap it is very much seen in the barium x-ray so now in the second part 
you can see there is a two opening this is the minor duodenal papilla this is the major duodenal papilla so what is the role of this foramen so this is the gateway of bile so the biliary channel opens in the superior or the major duodenal papilla because it is the orifice just posterior lateral to the duodenal wall that means the here you can see the pancreatic duct that is major pancreatic duct and the bile duct common bile duct so two duct is united to form the ampulla of bladder that will be discussed later on so that ampulla of bladder opens in the second part of the duodenum and there is also 2 cm above there is another minor foramen it is called the minor duodenal papilla or it is also called the duct of santorini uh, and the major duodenal papilla contains the duct of wirsang it is called the duct of wirsang and it is called the duct of santorini santorini duct get pancreatic enzyme from the head and uh, head of the pancreas okay now there is some basic difference between jejunum and ileum so jejunal wall is more thicker and more circular folds are present because you can see there are circular folds which will increase the surface surface area and that's why the wall of the jejunum is more thicker an arterial arcade is not so dense but in the ileum the wall of the ileum is thinner than the jejunum but there are some special characteristics like 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 pierce patches you can see there is uh, aggregated lymphoid follicles that is called the pierce patches which will act as a protective barriers or act as a protection of the gut which will produce immunoglobulin a helps that helps in prevention of diarrheal diseases or other mesenteric infection or enteric infections but on the other hand the layers of the jejunum is as like same like inner mucous membrane then sub mucous membrane then circular muscles inner circular and outer longitudinal muscles and the serosal layer so the full intestine is peritoneal that is intraperitoneal organ except the third and second part of the duodenum which is retroperitoneal but first part of the duodenum is intraperitoneal so whole jejunum ileum is containing the mesentery so mesentery will suspend the whole intestine into the peritoneum so there are some clinical importance regarding the pierce patches because in case of typhoid fever these pierce patches become perforated and causes peritonitis so and the in case of ileum there are numerous straight arteries then the jejuna okay now the microstructures of the intestine correspondingly it is a duodenum jejunum and the ileal portion so inner to outwards that is inner mucous membrane the muscle layers and the serous membrane which lies outwards so you can see in the mucous membrane to the inner luminal structures you can see some muc finger like projection uh, it is called the circular mucus fold mic macroscopically 
microscopically it is seen like villi or microvilli microvilli are smaller than the villi this is the villi this is the microvilli and this is the pear patches or in some cases in some other directions it is look like solitary lymphatic follicles or the aggregated lymphoid follicles which is called the pear patches okay now the small intestine has a common epithelial membrane that is a epi surface epithelium which is called simple columnar epithelium so these are the tall columnar or simple tall columnar epithelium which is villous structures like vill uh, villi like structures and then the next layer is called the lamina propria so this is the lamina propria and the thin layers of muscles which is called the muscularis mucosi so here it is the muscularis mucosi and the the next area is called the submucous coat so mucus membrane submucous coat muscular and serous membrane so you can see there are two muscular layers present in whole small intestine and inner circular that means this is the outer longitudinal and inner circular the dot dot structures are the circular muscular layer and in between two muscle layer there is a nervous coat which is called submucosal nervous coat or local nervous plexus it is called the orbes plexus or the myenteric plexus these orbes or myenteric plexus perform the peristalsis or an one way direction of the food that is propulsive movement of the intestine which is triggered or maintained by the myenteric plexus or orbes plexus and in between submucus and the muscle layer there is a single muscular layer it is called the mesenes plexus it also another nervous coat so myenteric plexus has a secretion of post ganglionic parasympathetic secretions and before that it is the preganglionic parasympathetic secretion so this is the preganglionic and this is the post ganglionic parasympathetic neuron connections so we all know that parasympathetic helps in increase the secretion of small intestine it also helps in absorption or more absorption from the mucus membrane okay so in the intestine this mucosal fold also increases the surface surface area for absorption and secretion villi will increase the surface at least 10 folds so as we see from the circular circular muscle circular mucus fold possesses three times more surface area and the villi will increase 10 time more surface area and the microvilli that means these are microvilli these will increase the surface area more than 20 fold so small intestine is like is like 6 feet like 6 meter sorry 6 meter uh, and the moreover so uh, so duodenum is 0.5 meters only and the rest of the portion is jejunum and the ileum so rest of the portion jejunum and ileum so jejunum and ileum possess 6 meter and 0.5 meter is duodenum so uh, among um, uh, among the sm all these parts of the small intestine jejunum is about 8 feet and the 12 feet 8 feet and 12 feet 
equal to 20 feet so 6 meter equal to 20 feet so ileum is the mo uh, most of the portion of the small intestine and maximum absorption and secretion will perform in the ileal region so if a person has any mesenteric ischemia or any disease in the artery supply jejunal portion can be excised but the ileal portion must not be cut down so, because if we resect the ileum that person will not have adequate absorption or secretion and all, we all also know that ileum has a special capability of maintaining enterohepatic circulations along with helps in absorption of vitamin b12 folic acids and other maturation factor for blood and hepatobiliary system so ileum is very important for absorption of the bile salt that's why uh, ileus ileal length is 12 feet and the most longest feet of all small intestine so you can see here some special type of cell present in the uh, mucous membrane of the small intestine that is argentafin cell it is also called the enterochromaffin cell so and the tall columnar cell and the goblet cell and the pennate cell so goblet cell helps in secretion of mucus and pennate cell it also helps in enzymatic enzyme rich secretion that is bicarbonate rich secretion with the superior mesenteric artery so you can see the part which is in anastomosed that means this is the full anterior and posterior pancreatico duodenal artery which has a two origin one is comes from the gastrointestinal artery another one comes from the superior mesenteric artery so as we can see the duodenum is highly vascular organ and the duodenum is mainly supplied by this artery through vasa recta 
now the arterial supply of the small intestine so as we know that duodenum is supplied by the gastro duodenal artery correspondingly anterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery and posteriorly posterior inferior pancreatic duodenal artery and then vasa recta multiple vasa recta now the rest of the part is that is jejunum and the ileum so jejunum is the moderate length containing and the rest of the part is ileum so you all know that the rest of the small intestine is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery that is it is one of the ventral branch of the abdominal aorta so a long artery which gives a full supply of the small intestine as well as a portion of large intestine so there are multiple small elongated blood vessels which is arises from the superior mesenteric artery and give supply to the corresponding luminous structures of the small intestine so these are called the arterial arcade so you can see there is a network of blood vessels those are called the arterial arcade so the numbering of the arterial arcade is various in the intestine so jejunal arterial arcade is more dense that means is less dense than the terminal ileum so ileal arterial arcade is more dense than the jejunal arterial arcade so here the one two or three arterial arcade present in each segments but in the jejunum there are multiple arterial arcade so here one or two arterial arcade present in for jejunum and three four or more arterial arcade present in the ileum so they are more numerous than the jejunum why because the most of the absorption reabsorption secretion occurs in the terminal ileum then the jejunum that's why more blood vessels and more supply is necessary in case of digestion absorption and the viability also so there is a clinical uh, correlations that if uh, surgically jejunal resected jejunum is resected a person can survive because most of the digestion absorption occurs in the terminal ileum but if the ileum is resected then there is a multiple deficiencies occurs in the body because there are vitamin b12 folic acid bile salt those all are reabsorbed in the ileum as well as some electrolyte which is also absorbed by the ileum so most of the pattern will be lost so in clinical aspect the mesenteric ischemia is more common in the post operative period sometimes superior mesenteric artery and some arterial arcade are blocked and the distal portion of the viscera become necrosed or died so arterial these are the arterial difference in the small intestine now the venous drainage so venous drainage is little bit different from the arterial system but it is also the full portion of the small intestine that present here which is supplied by the superior mesenteric vein so this is the superior mesenteric vein in case of artery that is superior mesenteric artery and the in case of vein it is called the superior mesenteric vein so here are, there are multiple uh venous drainage area present in the superior mesenteric vein and they will reunite it with this splenic vein and form the portal vein this will opens or end in the goes to the hepatic portal system this is the hepatic portal system 
and is a portal vein. 80% of the blood of the liver is derived from portal vein. And okay, now here you can see the supply of the intestine. So this is the jejunum and the ileum and the part of the duodenum. So you can see the duodenum is also supplied by the superior mesenteric vein. And the rest of the portion that is jejunum and ileum it is also supplied by the superior mesenteric vein and their tributaries. Now the venous lymphatic drainage. So in this stage these are multiple lymph nodes that present in the mesenteric area or just adjacent to the superior mesenteric vein and artery there are some nodular structures which they, those are linked with each other. You can see these lymph nodes these are the lymph nodes or the lymphatic channels those are connected with each other those are get the lymphatic drainage from the corresponding luminal wall and go through the lymphatic channels and ends in the superior mesenteric that is superior mesenteric nodes so these are the superior mesenteric node by juxta intestinal groups or a group of lymph nodes that will go through and directly to the superior mesenteric nodes then it goes to the cisterna chile so this is the cisterna chile the largest lymphatic reservoir in the abdomen which is attached or lied on the right crust of the diaphragm it up to the lumbar thoracic 12 to lumbar 1 okay and here you can see also the celiac node there's that also goes to the cisterna chile so this is the dilated portion of the thoracic duct which is called the cisterna chile it is a it is act as a reservoir of the limb lymphatics that is limb now the nervous system so all the viscera that is duodenum jejunum and ileum those are supplied by the autonomic nervous system that is sympathetic parasympathetic so the nerves nerve or the nerve channels those are supplied as a plexus so it contains both sympathetic and parasympathetic itself so you can see there are yellowish net like structures that comes through the visceral wall and gives supply to the distal visceras like this is the jejuna ileum so these are the intestine which is being connected as a nervous system both sympathetic and parasympathetic so parasympathetic we all know that parasympathetic supply is done from the vagus that is 10th cranial nerve and the sympathetic system is supplied by thoracic 9 to lumbar that is thoracic uh, 9 to lump thoracic 12 okay thoracic 9 to thoracic 12 so though this segment of ventral rami of spinal nerve which gives supply as a preganglionic sympathetic fibers which will comes to the superior mesenteric ganglion so it is the superior mesenteric ganglion okay so the preganglionic fiber of the thoracic 9 to thoracic 12 segment of spinal nerve will comes as a presynaptic nerve which is also called the greater lesser and least splanchnic nerve so why it is called like this because greater lesser splanchnic means the visceral 
we all know this plant name is the visceral and the somatopleuric means the parietal layer so these are the visceral layers of peritoneum which is because in here the you can see the uh, structures which has been cut down from here it is a parietal per layer of parietal peritoneum so the nerve just comes beneath the peritoneum so the preganglion is sympathetic fiber from the thoracic 9 to thoracic 12 which is comes as a greater lesser least splanking nerve that will comes in and make synapse in the superior mesenteric ganglion then the post ganglionic fibers of the sympathetic chain are longer so they will supply the wall of the small intestine so here it is so this is the superior mesenteric ganglion these are the greater and lesser least splanchnic nerve those will come to the super mesenteric ganglion and make synapse and gives supply to the surrounding viscera